When we were working on our window grill project, we looked at forging a simple ribbon scroll. A ribbon scroll being one that just tapered out evenly to the end, doesn't have any special element, it just scrolled up nicely and cleanly. There are lots of other ways you can treat the end of a scroll, and it's usually that end that des defines what you call the scroll. Today I thought we'd look at a, a nice little scroll that is called a snub end scroll. And we'll look at a couple of different ways to do a form of a snub end, but these will be fairly simple. This is the simplest version of a snub end scroll that I can think of. There are two other versions that often are called snub end scrolls, even though they have other names as well, and that would be a hay penny scroll or a hay penny snub end scroll or a bolt end scroll or a bolt end scrub, bolt end snub. Anyways, you get the idea. Um, and we will do the, the bolt in scroll and the hay penny scroll as different videos. This is just going to be a simple snub in scroll. We're going to use a piece of quarter by three quarter. This is about 12 inches long. That doesn't matter. We're just going to worry about that end detail that makes it a snub in scroll. And also scroll up the end just enough to give you the idea what that looks like. And then we'll save these for comparison later and cut them all off the same. But Right now we're starting with about 12 inches. Probably the key element for any snub in scroll is the snub or the thick section at the very end. It should still taper gracefully from that point up till it reaches the same thickness as the main bar of the scroll just to make it a more graceful scroll but you need to define that snub first. And the first one we're going to do is really quite simple. I'm just going to bend the end over a little bit upset it ever so slightly, taper back, and that will become the snub. So I'm just going to bend this over a little bit. There, just the end. What we want is kind of a, a round end in the long run. So I just want to do a little bit of an upset here, and sort of vaguely a square corner. Try and keep everything even. And then I want to come back here and taper this. Now my anvil does not have the crispest corners in the world, so I'm going to use an anvil block. Now in this dimension we want to keep it parallel, so we need to keep working that back to the original width. You can see how that's starting to get thinner, and we're ending up with a bit of a snub in there. We're going to refine that a little bit more after I draw some more of this out. And ultimately that snub is going to be kind of a round area. And kind of see what we're going for here. I may end up with a little cold shut there, but there's no stress on this, so it's not really going to hurt anything. This just needs to be a nice graceful taper. The exact distance only matters if you're trying to match tapers from one scroll to the other. But since this is just an example, it's not all that critical. Then I want to knock the corners down, just because I like the chamfered corners. Then we'll take another heat and refine that little snub end right there, just a little bit cleaner. This block just substitutes for the edge of the anvil where my anvil is a little bit rough. I'm trying to work that back in so it looks like a nice round element on the end there. It's still a little bit washed out right there in the corner. 
I think perhaps a set hammer or even a little bit of file work might be the way to go there. Let's see if a set hammer gets in there and cleans that up nicely. My set hammer has one set of edges that are nice and crisp and one set that are rounded. So I'm going to use the crisper side here. I think that looks a lot better. So that's a lot cleaner looking. We'll get a, another good heat and we'll start working this back a little bit more and then we'll roll the scroll up. So we just want to roll the snub up so it's kind of part of the scroll and not just a blob sitting on the end. And we'll start scrolling by hand and by eye at the anvil. And makes a nice place to hook into the scroll form. down on the scroll form as we go around. We'll need another little heat there, but that's coming out very nicely. We'll put that back in the scroll jig and we'll pull it around just a little bit more. Sorry for stepping in front of the camera. And that's a good sample of how that scroll can look. I think I'm going to do a little filing. I see a little pointy spot on the end of the snub, so I think I'll get in there with a small file and clean that up. Would have been better to do before I scrolled it. For a second version of what is essentially the same style of snub in scroll, just a heavy end that is kind of rounded up, I'm going to forge weld the end. I'm going to double it back on itself, forge weld it, and then scroll it. This should give us just a little bit more mass than we had in the first example. To do this, I'm going to set off about a half inch of material over the hardy and just cut about halfway through. I don't want to cut all the way through. I'm going to bend that back over onto itself. And that will be the snub. And I'm going to put just a little bit of flux in there. Then we'll weld it. We just want to weld this lightly. We don't want to take any extra mass out of it by overworking it. And I'm going to thin the end again just like I did before. As you can see I've got a lot more mass here. I'm going to start rounding that up as I refine the weld edge. You can kind of see what we're going for. I'll bring that back up to welding heat again. Refining this at welding heat just helps to ensure that you don't shear the weld off. And everything else at this point is pretty much the same. trying to round up opposite corners here, but I'm going to leave this pointy, unlike I did with the last one, and I'll explain that in just a second. That tapers out nicely, so we'll chamfer the, the edges off. And for now, that's what I'm going for. Next, it's going to be just a little bit more refining here. This doesn't quite look as round as I would like it to. Now I'm going to stand it up on edge, and now I'm going to work that part that I left a little pointy to get this to tuck down nicely and form a nice scrolled in. If we had rounded that to start with, it would be oval now instead of rounding up. So we left a mass where we wanted it so that it finished the way we wanted. Hope that makes sense. I'm 
This is a much nicer snub end than the first one because we were able to add extra mass by virtue of forge welding that. If you watched my first forge welding video where we discussed a faggot weld, which is essentially stacking a bundle of things, in this case it's a bundle of two, but that's what this would be as a faggot weld. And an example of why that's a good weld to know. Now I'm going to get it hot and we're going to start refining the, forming the scroll part. Make sure you watch this from both directions so you can see how it's scrolling up. Now let's go to the scroll form. Just like before, we'll hook that on the, the form. We'll bend it around, or pull it around is a more correct term. If it starts to get a little cold, we can use a bending fork to help this some. Um, hopefully my arm's not in the way. But I think I'll get it hot to fi finish that. You don't want to try and bend it too cold or you end up putting some kinks in it. So that's bent far enough to get the effect of what that scroll is going to look like. So here we have two different interpretations of the same concept of just a mass that is rounded up on the end of the bar. This is just kind of an upset square corner folded over. Nothing too difficult. And this is a simple forge weld. It makes a much nicer, much larger snub end. And we can compare these then to a, a simple ribbon scroll, which is what we did for our grill project. And you can see this adds just a little bit more of a, an interest element on the end of these. We will discuss the other two things that fall into the category of snub-in scrolls as separate videos, one for each one, because they both have some unique elements and are a bit more complicated than what we did today. And that would be the haypenny scroll and the bolt-in scroll. Uh, I've seen the bolt-in scroll called a fishtail snub-in scroll. Um, but there are, are some differences, and they're, they're interesting scrolls. Maybe a little, little bit more complicated. The haypenny is not that difficult, but it just has a little bit of a twist to it, and therefore it's worth doing as a separate video. Now, this style of snub-in scroll with just the fat section and a tapered scroll behind it is often done in a much heavier bar, something like a half-inch or three-quarter inch thick bar for big work. And then you don't need to add mass. You just offset what's going to be the snub off the anvil and then draw out the scroll behind it and leave that mass behind and put a nice graceful taper in the end until you get back to your original bar thickness. And that's a very good way to do it. I just wanted to illustrate these in quarter inch material because I think that's a fairly common material for people to work with. So you can create a nice snub end in quarter inch bar. Some excellent resources for this type of work come from a series of books that I think were printed quite some time ago from the Council of Small Industry in Rural Areas. This is a set of books from the United Kingdom and like I say I don't think they're they're still doing books like this. I don't think there's any more in the series than what I'm going to show you here but I suspect they are still available as reprints if you look at places like Centaur Forge, Amazon, Artisan Ideas, places like that check and see, you'll probably be able to find reprints of these books. If not, check eBay. So this is the series of books. The Blacksmith's Craft, this one I've had for ages and is a fairly old book. Let's see if it tells you what year. It says first published in 1952. This is the 1983 edition, uh, but the information doesn't change much. Some very good information in here. This one doesn't have much on ornamental work. It's more general blacksmithing. The third book, and this one I am sure is, now goes by the Countryside Agency, so they've actually changed the name of the organization. It looks like I got this one from 
artisanideas.com and you can go to their website and see if they still have these available. This is a much more recent book. And it looks like this is the 2000 reprint. So that's fairly recent. So it's probably still available. And this has some general ornamental work, some pretty interesting stuff. Hopefully you can see some of these things. And we're going to do some of these the things out of these books in small scale just to do some simple decorative work that is very different from anything I've ever done myself. So it should be a little bit of fun. But the one that has scroll work is one they call wrought iron work. So even these guys use wrought iron to refer to this kind of work even though I think it's not quite right but that's just the way it is. And this has a lot of information on making general elements for ornamental iron work, twists, collars, sea scrolls, how to make a scrolling tool, but they also have a section on just scrolls and they show these various types of scrolls and we'll walk you through the process of making some of these. So these are pretty good books if you can find them. Well that's all I've got for today. I hope you found that interesting. Just adds another few options to your repertoire of ornamental iron options for making scrolls. And we're going to do more scrolls in the future, probably in fairly short order, and get what little I know about scrolls presented, and then we'll move on to something else. Maybe try some of the other techniques in that third book. I hope you like the video. hope you can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But do make time to get out to your shop, do something, challenge your imagination, try something you've never tried before, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.